Hi, and welcome to this first video tutorial covering the basics of the Xenco game engine. In this series of the introduction to Xenco, we will cover the basics of getting started with Xenco game engine and the Xenco editor called Game Studio. In this first tutorial, we'll cover the Xenco launcher and setting up our project. As you can see here, I've installed Xenco and I've started the Xenco launcher. To the left here, you will find all the versions of Xenco that you have installed. I currently have two of them installed, which I can remove and I can additionally download extra versions of Xenco. Here in the middle, you can see all the projects that you have created. In the top right of every project, you can see the version that your project is currently at. You can always upgrade your project to a next version of Xenco by selecting the version and then simply opening the project. Note that you cannot downgrade to a lower version, so always be sure to back up your project before you upgrade it to another version. To the right, we will find some additional documentation links and there's a tab for some news items as well. If we move over back to the left, you will see that there is a Visual Studio plugin available. If you're using Visual Studio, then you can install this plugin to aid your way around programming in C Sharp. Of course, there are various other links here available at the bottom, which you can just click at your own will. So let's start now by creating a basic project with the Xenco launcher. So I have the 3.1 version, which is currently in beta, select it and I'm just going to use that. This will open a project selection screen and this means that we can either open any of the existing projects or in case we've imported or copied a project somewhere on our computer we can browse for an existing project but in our case we want to start a new project and we're going to start with a brand new game which only contains like four or five assets. Now, if you're new to Xenco and you want to see some of its some of its possibilities and some of its features, then I highly encourage you to check out all of these samples here and just create a basic scene. And once you're done with it, simply delete it and you can always come back here, create a new project if you want to. If you want to get started by making an actual game, you can also just go to the template section and choose for and choose out of one of these options available. For this tutorial series, however, we're going to start entirely from scratch and we're going to learn that by using a new game. I will call this project Introduction Tutorial. And with that, we can get started. The next step in creating our game project is by selecting the platforms that we want to develop for. For this tutorial, we'll simply select Windows, which is the default option. If you want to develop for Android or iOS, you will also need to install Xamarin. If you need any of the default asset packs, or just simply to play around with as a placeholder, then you can select those here. You can leave the rendering options by default at Direct3D 10 or OpenGL 3.0. If you're developing for mobile, select the portrait motors. But in our case, we're just going to make a little PC game, or at least the tutorial series will be covering a PC game. Once you're done here, click OK, and your project will get created. Now that our project is being created, it's being built, and it's being loaded for the first time. As you can see, these flickering materials you see here in this editor view that means an indication that our project is still loading and building all the assets and materials being used in the scene that is currently open. In the next tutorial we'll start looking into all the panels that we have available in the Xenco Game Studio. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you at the next one.